cell. It has a positive side and a negative side. If I connect a metal wire from one side to another side, I have now created a circuit. Now this is commonly drawn like this. So here's our cell. The long side is the positive side and the short side is the negative side. And this black line around it represents the metal wire that makes the circuit. Now in a circuit, we have electrons that flow. And electrons always flow from the negative side towards the positive side. However, they could also ask you about current. Current is the flow of charge. And current always flows from positive to negative. The current is the same everywhere in the circuit. Now, what would happen if I break the circuit? This would mean there'll be no more flow of current. Okay, we fixed it again. Okay, so what does the cell do? The cell provides a driving force. Another word for that is potential difference. So without a driving force, you'd have no current. Also, different cells can have different potential differences. So you need to make sure you choose the right one based on your circuit. Here I have a circuit with one cell. In this circuit, I have three cells joined together. When you have more than one cell joined together, that is called a battery. Which circuit will have a larger current, A or B? The answer is B. Because we have more cells, that means there's going to be a larger driving force and therefore we'll get more current. Now resistance is a mean thing. It slows down the current. So for example, if you have something like a bulb in your circuit, the more resistance there is, the dimmer your bulb will become. Not cool. Resistance is measured in ohms. Okay, quick summary. We know that potential difference is the driving force, current is the flow of charge, and resistance slows down the current. Resistance measured in ohms, current is measured in amps, and potential difference is measured in volts. Now, you can work out the voltage of something using a voltmeter, which looks like this. And we can also work out the current using an ammeter. But to work out the resistance, we're going to have to use an equation. So here's an equation that you need to memorize. Potential difference equals current times resistance. So if you know potential difference and current, all we have to do is rearrange the equation and we can work out resistance. So here I have a circuit and I want to attach my bulb to the circuit. The bulb has a 6 volt rating. I want the bulb to be as bright as possible. I have a cell that has a 5 volt rating, another one with 10 volt rating, and another one with a 4 volt rating. Which cell should I use so I can get the brightest light from the bulb? I can't use this one because the rating is too high. Our bulb is only 6 volts. This cell has 10 volts. These two are safe. They're both lower than 6 volts. But which one should I choose? I can't use them both together. That would make 9 volts. So I have to pick one. So I'm going to go with 5 volts. This is the highest one and closest to 6. Now I can get some bright light to watch movies. Now my bulb will start to shine. Now if you don't know the voltage of a battery, all you have to do is connect a voltmeter to it. In fact, you can connect a voltmeter to anything in the circuit, but make sure that when you connect the voltmeter, it goes around both sides of the thing that you're measuring. So here we can see the voltmeter is around the battery on both sides. So as a rule, the voltmeter has to be around both sides of the thing you're measuring. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.